Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Uh, it's really hot out here. Is it hot where you're at? Because it's definitely hot here. Um, and when I think of a hot day, I think of a nice, cool, crisp glass of rosé. Um, and I know a lot of times when we think about rosé, um, you know, when you see the pink color, you start thinking of like white Zinfandel. You think of something that's going to be really, really sugary and sticky and sweet. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, for the most part, when you see a bottle that's labeled rosé, um, these are coming from some serious producers that are really giving you some nice dry uh, wines that bring a really good acidity that are really meant to be like everyday hot day type of wines, food pairing wines. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, this wine right here was a sample sent to me by the fine folks at Cornerstone Cellars. This is their second label. It's called Stepping Stone. Um, so where you would see their, their bigger uh, Cornerstone Cellars Cabernets being upwards of $50, uh, the Stepping Stone label, um, you're looking at things that are running more in like the, the $30 type of range. And this is, uh, this right here, their rosé, the Coralina uh, rosé from 2011, this comes in at 20 bucks. Um, so it's a, it's a nice entry level, a way to really look at a winery with these second level, uh, second labels. Now, this is a rosé made of Syrah. The Syrah is from the Oak Knoll District, which is on the cooler side of Napa Valley. It's pretty far south, pretty close to the San Pablo Bay. Um, and it's an area that's more well known for Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs, um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, and, and it's so hot, I'm just going to just dive right into it. So color-wise, you are getting this really, you know, on the darker side of pink, um, a nice, almost reddish kind of salmon color. It looks really good. Let's give it a little sniff here. Well, that's nice. This wine here uh, sat on French oak for, for five months, which you don't see a whole lot of um, when you look at rosés. Normally, I would think of, you know, steel uh, tanks, but here we go on French oak for five months, and definitely there is a, a little bit of a, a, a creamy type of note to this nose. There are some uh, some citrus notes, like some some grapefruit and some lemon. I'm getting a little strawberry as well. And there's a really good minerality on here. There's also like um like this hybrid like cherry cranberry thing going on. It's not as as upfront as those other flavors, but it is kind of subtle and it is there. Some floral notes, some uh, some like white uh, flower petal type of notes. It smells it smells really good. Let's just dive into this here. This is sturdy. This has some structure to it. Normally, when we uh, look at rosés, we're thinking about stuff that as soon as you buy it, you're going to chill it, pop it open, drink it, and definitely, you know, that's what I'm doing with this sample right here I just got the other day. Um, but this is also a wine that, a rosé, shockingly enough, that I wouldn't mind laying down for a couple years. Um, and I say that because what is very present from the beginning um, is that oak treatment. There is that creaminess to this wine. There are some uh, vanilla characteristics to this rosé. I mean, this isn't your typical, you know, just, and there is plenty of acid here, but it's not this typical, you know, acid fruit in your face, goodbye, go away. This is a wine that, as I'm still talking to you here, I am getting like these lingering, just creamy, flavors that are sticking around, these creamy and floral flavors. This is possibly, I'll throw it down, this is probably, this is, this is easily 
one of the most complex rosés I've ever had the pleasure of tasting here. So yeah, along with those creamy notes, there is this um, strawberry and like uh, strawberry grapefruit um, type of type of flavor to it that's really nice, and there is this really awesome long acidity that um, is is very pleasant. And this is definitely a food friendly wine. Um, Unlike other rosés, I wouldn't say that it's limited um, to lighter style foods. Um, later tonight, I'm going to try to recreate one of the dishes that I had in Japan. I'm going to make this stuff called okonomiyaki um, that is going to include just a little bit of pork um, in it. And I really think that this rosé here is going to stand up to that. I think it would pair really well with a lot of Asian dishes, a lot of spicy dishes. I could also see this going with, you know, uh, Cornerstone suggests that you have this with a, um, with like a nice grilled salmon, um, and, and I think that would be great. I think um, maybe even some heavier uh, pastas would be nice, but this is a, a really nice rosé right here, and on a, on a hot day when I am sweating like crazy. Um, Sometimes you want just something nice and cool. Now, I didn't overly chill this thing. Um, this just came out of my wine fridge at like 54, 53 degrees. Um, so not nearly as cold as your fridge. Um, but I really think that's all you need. You know, you don't want this so cold that you can't taste these flavors. Because this is definitely a very, very, very um, complex rosé. This ain't your mama's rosé. This is your... Uh, this is your uncle's rosé. I mean, it's really just kind of, not in your face, not overly aggressive, but it definitely has something to say, and you definitely want to listen uh, to what it's got to say. Otherwise, it's going to punch you in the leg when you're not looking. This is very nice. Um, Score-wise, score-wise, I'm definitely 89. I think is the way to go. Um, it, it's definitely something that I would recommend you checking out. At, at 20 bucks, you know, sometimes there's that hesitation uh, for a rosé, you know. You can find a lot of pretty good ones in the, uh, you know, less than $15. Um, but this is definitely one that you would want to seek out because it is just, it's different than other rosés, um, and, and it is bringing something kind of fun with those creamy notes. I, I mean, all in all, just good stuff. I mean, it's 14.1% alcohol, and, and honestly, if you told me it was 12, I'd believe you. Um, it really well balanced and, and a really solid effort um, by Cornerstone. Uh, so there you go. I mean, definitely, if you guys see this, pick this up. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I guess I'm going to try to make this uh, Japanese food, uh, and maybe I'll post some pictures of that below, or maybe do it in a, in a separate entry right afterwards. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it, so maybe I need just a little bit more of this to... Uh get me going. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you later. Everybody stay rad.